بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so today إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to take a look at the name of Allah al Ghani al Ghani means well it can be translated as the rich or the independent uh, coming from the root verb غني يغنى غنا or غناء فهو غان غني to be rich uh, to be self-sufficient, to be satisfied, content, independent, to be free of any want or to have enough. This is what is implied by this verb. What does this name of Allah mean when we say that Allah is al-ghani? Well, it's mentioned 18 times in the Qur'an. And the implication is that there's nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could want that he doesn't already have. And no one and no thing could offer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything to improve him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no deficiencies. Humans depend upon outside sources, like for example money, to make them rich. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depends upon nothing. He is the source of all riches. He is the essence of richness and value itself. SubhanAllah, very powerful thought. When you think, what is the thing that gives me value? You're looking at external things that make you, you know, if I have more of this, if I have more of that, it'll make me valuable. SubhanAllah, the concept is what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need things to become valuable. Allah ta'ala is the essence of value in and of itself. SubhanAllah, remarkable. Uh, whereas humans depend on others for uh, different uh, needs. Like for example, let's leave money aside. What about things that are a little bit more, uh, you know, conceptual in nature or a little bit more metaphysical in nature? For example, love, right? A sense of companionship. You get that from a spouse. Or when it comes to continuity, right? I'm going to die one day. I want my legacy to move on. This is why we have children. Uh, we have some sort of lineage. So we depend upon not just material things for, to be, make us rich, but we also depend upon people because of different needs that we have. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs no partners. He needs no spouse. He needs no children. This is all emphasized, for example, in uh, Surah Yunus, ayah number 68. Um, and furthermore, Allah Ta'ala's riches could never be exhausted. In fact, there's a beautiful hadith, Sahih Muslim, it's a hadith Qudsi, in which Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, law anna awalakum wa akhirakum wa insakum wa jinnakum, qamu fi sa'idin wahidin, fasa'aluni, fa'a'ataytu kulla insanin, a mas'alatahu, ma naqasa thalika mimma indi, illa kama yanqusul mikhyatu, idha udkhil al bahar. O my slaves, O my servants, were if, if the first of you and the last of you and the humans of you and the jinn of you were to rise up in one area, in one place, and to make a request of me, and were I to give every single one of them what he requested, that should not decrease what I have any more than a needle decreases the sea if I put it into it. In other words, you put in a needle in the ocean, you pull it out, you get a, you know, I don't know, less than a, even a drop, and subhanAllah, this is how much it's removing from Allah Ta'ala's uh, 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 riches. Now obviously you might say, oh well that technically removes point oh 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 whatever the case is. No. The idea is that it is uh, um, uh, to be understood in a more symbolic nature and the idea is that it's, it's impossible. You can't exhaust the uh, Allah Ta'ala's riches or greatness in any way. Now in terms of this name of Allah, uh, it occurs next to Hamid ten times. So Al-Ghani Al-Hamid, the most rich uh, uh, or you could say rich and independent and then Hamid being the all praiseworthy, the one who deserving of all praise. These two come together ten times in the Quran. Why is that the case? Well, there's a few ways to interpret it, a few ways to appreciate these two names of Allah. For instance, you could say that we know that Allah Ta'ala commanded us to worship Him. We know Allah Ta'ala created us. I have not created man or jinn except to worship me. Now, if Allah Ta'ala made us to praise Him, to worship Him, let's say to give Him hamd or to praise Him, then is that because He needs it? No. And how do we know that? Because he is a ghani, he is not in need of anything. He doesn't need praise, rather we praise him because, number one, because we need him. Not because he needs us, but because we need him. And number two, uh, he is praised because he is praiseworthy. He is al-hamid, he is the one that is deserving of all praise, and therefore it is the right thing to do regardless. So this is one way of understanding this, that I don't need it, but it is the right thing for you to do, because Allah Ta'ala is praiseworthy, he is al-hamid. Um, and so Ghani and Hamid come together. Another perspective is what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept any deeds that are sullied with shirk, right? We know this. We know that if you say, oh, I'm going to sacrifice this or I'm going to give this in charity in the name of Allah and in the name of some other deity, obviously this would be entirely rejected. And so you can't be showing off for the sake of other people. That's minor shirk or riya showing off. And you can't be doing it explicitly or, or, or uh, for the sake of some other deity. Uh, the, the only reason such a deed would be accepted is out of desperation. And obviously Allah Ta'ala isn't desperate for your deeds. He's ghani. He is entirely rich. He doesn't need it. Or it might be because the Allah Ta'ala lacks some sort of standard. 
that okay, I'll accept it, even though it, it, it's 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 uh, you know uh, failing in terms of certain standards. But you know we're lax around here when it comes to standards. Our billah, that which is obviously not the case because Allah Taala is Al Hamid, so He is the most praiseworthy. He doesn't lack in any standards, nor is there any desperation whatsoever. He is Al Ghani, Al Hamid, and therefore you must worship Him exclusively if you want your worship to be accepted. And, and that means no major or minor shirk. You can't be doing it for some other deity and you can't be doing it with the hope that other people will praise you, recognize you, whatever the case is. Uh, and a, another perspective on these two names coming together is what? That humans praise people who are rich, who are wealthy, who are powerful, who are independent, etc. And so Allah Ta'ala is reminding us that He is the most rich. Subhanu, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is the most rich and therefore He is deserving of most praise. He is Al-Ghani Al-Hamid. And as for the name of Allah, Al-Ghani, showing up with Al-Halim, Halim meaning the forbearing, this occurs once in the Qur'an. Why is this the case? Well, because uh, Allah, subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't patient with his slaves because he lacks the resources to take them to account. Rather, it's because he possesses all resources. But uh, he's just patient because he is Halim. He's Ghani. I have all the resources to take you to account, but I don't because I am Halim. So it's not a lack of resources issue. These two clarify the matter. Furthermore, Allah Ta'ala has no need to take immediate retribution because he's infinitely rich. He just doesn't, like, you know, sometimes you, you feel the desire, like the moment somebody does something wrong to you, and now I have a need to get them back. Allah Ta'ala is Ghani. He doesn't have to get you back in the sense that, you know, there's some, some, some sort of desperate need because Allah is Ghani. He is, uh, and so therefore, he can be Halim. He can take his time with these issues. And furthermore, the third uh, aspect is what? That the rich, rich people will often use their wealth to get back at their enemies immediately. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is both infinitely rich and yet at the same time infinitely forbearing, which shows how unique Allah ta'ala is. One time in the Quran, you also have the pairing of Al-Ghani Al-Kareem. Al-Ghani meaning the most rich and Al-Kareem meaning the most generous. This implies a few things. Once, one thing that it implies is that Allah ta'ala gives abundantly uh, uh, because he is generous not because he's in any need of gratitude. You know, somebody might think, oh, Allah Ta'ala has blessed me so much because he's desperate for my uh, uh, appreciation. And the answer is no. He is ghani, he's not desperate for anything. He gives because he's kareem, because he's generous, and that is Allah Ta'ala's nature, to be uh, generous. And furthermore, uh, uh, another perspective is what? That Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is rich, but he doesn't hoard his riches to himself like uh, other people may do. Somebody has some wealth and they say it's all to me. Rather, no. Allah Ta'ala is Al-Ghani, the most rich, but he is also Al-Kareem, the one who is constantly giving generously. Uh, and of course, uh, Al-Ghani occurs by itself five times. It also occurs with Dhul Rahma, which is, you could say, debatably a name of Allah, but not really. Uh, so Al-Ghani, uh, Dhul Rahma. Dhul Rahma means the one possessing mercy. So it's reference to Allah, but it wouldn't be considered one of the names of Allah, and Allah knows best. So now, the big question is, what effect should this name have on us? Well, we should make dua with this name of Allah. We know that the name of Allah, Al-Ghani, the most rich, is mentioned, uh, was mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ in a dua when the Sahaba were complaining about a drought. The Sahaba, were uh, in a drought and they asked the Prophet ﷺ to make a dua for rain. And so he made the dua, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmuddin, La ilaha illa Allahu, Yaf'alu ma yureed, Allahumma anta, anta Allah, La ilaha illa ant, Al-Ghani, wa nahnu al-Fuqara. That the Prophet made this dua and said, All praise due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of the universe, the most gracious, the most merciful, and the master of the day of judgment. There is no God but Allah. He does what he wishes. O oh Allah, you are, uh, you are Allah. And there is no deity except you. You are the rich and we are the poor. So subhanAllah, what's so important about this dua and even this name of Allah is that you want to contrast it with yourself. You want to say that when I think that Allah Ta'ala is al-ghani and I know Allah is unique and I know Allah Ta'ala, there's no one compared to him, what does this all imply? It is a re-emphasis that I am in desperate need of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. No matter how much my bank account may confuse me or may uh, delude me, uh, ultimately, I have to have that humility. And subhanAllah, after this dua, the dua goes on. The Prophet says, send down rain upon us. Uh, and, and the dua goes on. And subhanAllah, when the dua was completed, the rain began to pour down and form even streams. It became heavy, heavy rain. So subhanAllah is one of the, uh, uh, you know, you could say, dala'il nubuwa, one of the signs of prophethood that subhanAllah, he made dua for rain and it came. Now, when it comes to needing money, we shouldn't feel obsessed with money. We should, we should try to develop contentment and satisfaction with Allah Ta'ala's decree 
uh, even though we're constantly working for more. What I mean to say is that we shouldn't be the type of people that say, oh, I'm going to aim low in life. No, you aim high. When it comes to your degree, when it comes to you know, your work, yes, of course, you want to aim high and you want to be successful in whatever you do, inshallah ta'ala. You want to have ihsan in everything. Uh, that being said, though, you put in the work and then you are content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever you may get. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ الْغِنَى عَنْ كَثْرَةِ الْعَرَضِ وَلَكِنَّ الْغِنَى غِنَى النَّفْسِ That wealth is not having uh, many possessions, but rather true wealth, having true richness, or you could say, yeah, having true richness is what? Is feeling sufficiency in the soul. In other words, richness is richness of the of the heart. Richness is a sense of self-satisfaction. Richness is to be content with what, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. And we all know this to be the case that it doesn't matter how much money somebody throws at you. If, uh, if your heart isn't a content heart, you'll always think I could get more, which is technically true. You can always have more, right? It doesn't matter if I give you, I don't know, a nice car. You'd say I have a, a nice car, but I don't have a boat. I don't have a yacht, and you can get the car and the yacht. You say, well, I don't have a jet, right? There's always something else that you could point to and say, well, you know, I could have more, I could have more. So subhanAllah, you need to realize that true uh, richness comes from satisfaction uh, and, and contentment in the soul. That is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are grateful for what you have, as the Prophet described. Furthermore, the Prophet says what? وَرَضَى بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكَ تَكُنْ أَغْنَ nas. Be content with what Allah ta'ala has allotted for you, and you will be of the richest of people. SubhanAllah, beautiful hadith saying what? Be contentment is how you actually become aghna uh, nas the richest of people, SubhanAllah. And in a hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned what? Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam. Tafarragh li ibadati am la sadaraka ghinan. O son of Adam, devote yourself to my worship and I will fill your chest with riches. So again, this is not meaning what? That you, uh, I don't know, abandon work and beg people or something like this. We don't have this attitude in Islam. Of course, you're supposed to work and you're supposed to work hard and you're supposed to excel in whatever, you, whatever field you involve yourself in. We want Muslims to be productive individuals. That being said, your obsession is not wealth. You want to be productive, you want to be effective, but at the same time, whatever wealth comes to you, yes, you keep working hard, but you are content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with that contentment is going to give you true richness, richness of the soul. Furthermore, the Prophet says what, what? Says what? وَمَنْ uh, uh, that whoever abstains from asking others, Allah Ta'ala will make him content. So again, you're not having this constant need for begging. Rather, if you want to have some sort of a need, you want need for forgiveness. You should not feel a need to have more money. This is the problem. When somebody looks at their bank account, it says, oh, it could be more. I have this need. I need to be higher. I need more money. I need more. I need more. This attitude is very unhealthy. If you want to have some sort of a desperation or some sort of a need, have need Feel poor towards Allah Ta'ala in terms of forgiveness. When we worship Allah Ta'ala, you must forget your material possessions, break your own ego, and feel that you have nothing, and that you are needy, and that Allah Ta'ala is the one who is rich and has everything that you need. That is the attitude you want to show up with in your salah. I don't care if you come to the masjid driving up in a Ferrari or Lamborghini or whatever fancy car you may have, you drive up. Once you park that car and walk into the masjid, you are the poorest of the poor. That should be your mentality, that I walk into the masjid and I have this absolute sense of need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and you should never be deluded by your wealth. Whether we recognize it or not, we are all hopelessly subjected to Allah ta'ala's will. And every breath and every heartbeat is under Allah's control, which makes us needy of his generosity constantly. Never feel independent from Allah, because this is of the greatest transgressions. We know right from the beginning of Revelation, when Allah Ta'ala says what? Kalla inna al insana la yatuha arra'ahu stagna. No, but indeed the human being transgresses, is uh, you know, uh, doing this tughyan, this transgression. What is his transgression? Arra'ahu stagna, that he sees himself as self sufficient. The moment you delude yourself, oh, look at me, I have this, I have that, I don't need anything, I got everything I need, this is, uh, uh, this is one of the worst of transgressions. Yes, we need to be independent of people. Of course, you want to work hard to be independent so that you are not a beggar. We know that the Prophet said what? al yadul ulya khayrun min al yadul sufla. That the upper hand is better than the lower hand. And then he went on to explain that the upper hand is the one that gives, right? When somebody's begging, their hands are open, they're the bottom hand, and then the one that gives is the top hand. So what does this imply? That the believer is not uh, so, you, you, don't, you don't shun materialism to the point that you become a beggar and in need. No, rather you work hard Inshallah, you become successful, and then you can give to others and be generous and, and give in charity and so on and so forth. But again, your objective is not just the obsession of wealth, but rather uh, the desire to please Allah Ta'ala. 
We know that no matter what, uh, Allah Ta'ala is not in need of us. We want to believe, but, because not, but not because Allah Ta'ala is in need of our faith. So for instance, Allah says, In takfuru, uh, in takfuru, uh, in takfuru antum, وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌ حَمِيدٌ If you should disbelieve and whoever is on the entire earth, if all of you should become disbelievers, indeed Allah is ghani, He is rich and He is free of any need and He is hamid, He is praiseworthy nonetheless. So we have faith in Allah Ta'ala not because He needs it but because we need that Iman. We are the ones who are in need of this faith. Furthermore, gratitude. Allah doesn't need our gratitude. وَمَنْ شَكَرَ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ رَبِّي غَنِيٌ كَرِيمٌ Allah says what? And whoever is grateful, then he's only grateful for the benefit of himself. You're not benefiting Allah. You're benefiting yourself when you are grateful to Allah. And whoever is ungrateful, then indeed my Lord is ghani. He is free of any need. And he is kareem. He's generous. Furthermore, worship. Allah Ta'ala doesn't need our worship. I did not create jinn and mankind except to worship me. I don't want for them any provision and I don't want them to feed me. I don't need anything from you. This isn't benefiting me. No. You worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to benefit yourself. And this is even the case when it comes to jihad. You know, you think to yourself, I'm striving for the sake of Allah. I'm striving hard for the sake of this ummah. And yes, of course, inshallah, you get rewarded for it. But don't think Allah ta'ala needs any favors. Allah ta'ala says what? وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ And whoever strives and makes jihad and, and struggles, then he only strives for the benefit of himself. This is for you. Allah doesn't need this. Indeed, Allah is free from any need of al-alameen, of anything of the worlds, of this entire universe, subhanAllah. So yes, we should remember that we are rewarded for asking for blessings, and then when we get them, we are rewarded for being grateful, subhanAllah. Yet despite that fact, unfortunately, how many things have we been blessed with that we never even asked for? We should make a habit of asking for things before we get them. I don't know, you order something on Amazon, let's say. Make uh, the intent of asking Allah Ta'ala, saying, Ya Allah, I'm asking you. Why? Because ultimately it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when it arrives, make the intention of what? Being grateful as well. Whenever you think something's on the way, you know, uh, make dua for it, ask for it. And then when you get it, be grateful for it. Because there's so many things, unfortunately, we've been blessed with, we didn't take the opportunity to ask for. How many things have we been blessed with that we, didn't, we weren't grateful for? This should make us love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more because it goes to show just how rich He is. He is al ghani and He keeps on giving. And uh, the final point that I want to mention is that you should not feel like you can only ask for Allah's blessings uh, when you are perfect. And in fact, one of the best lessons that, we, uh, that, that can teach us this fact is uh, an example from Sulaiman alayhi salam. Sulaiman alayhi salam, if you take a look at Surah Sa'd, which is Surah 38, you find that Allah Ta'ala mentions mistakes that he made. So in, from Ayat 31 to 33, it talks about how he was distracted from worship because of the horses that he was dealing with. That was one mistake. Then, in ayah number 34, Allah Ta'ala mentions that a body was placed on his throne. And generally speaking, when you take a look at the tafsir, the interpretation is that he made this intention uh, to have lots of children, and he didn't say, the, uh, the, uh, he didn't say inshallah. He just said, I'm going to have a bunch of children, and they're all going to be, you know, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, warriors and so on and so forth. They're going to worship Allah Ta'ala, and he didn't say inshallah. And so because he didn't say that, then instead of him having a bunch of healthy children, he had a, a, you know, the, the only woman that got pregnant was a miscarriage. And this is mentioned in Surah Sa'd, ayah number 34. So you see two mistakes being made. And then what happens right after that? So that's from ayah 31 to 33, then ayah number 34. What happens in ayah number 35? SubhanAllah, look at the, look at the, the order. This is not arbitrary. Then Allah Ta'ala says what? He makes this dua. قَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَهَبَ لِي مُلْكًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ بَعْدِي then he makes the dua, my Lord, forgive me and grant me a kingdom such as will not belong to anybody after me. Indeed, you are Al-Wahhab, the one who bestows the greatest of gifts. What am I trying to get at in this entire scene here? What, what am I trying to highlight? I'm trying to highlight the fact that Allah Ta'ala gave Sulaiman a kingdom that nobody before him had and nobody after him will ever have. So he was given something so incredibly unique and so I don't know, me personally, maybe the viewer, you guys think to yourselves, this is because of how incredibly perfect and uh, uh, you know, amazing Sulaiman was, alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, I'm not denying the fact that he's a prophet of Allah and that he is incredible and he is amazing. That being said, Allah Ta'ala specifically highlighted two mistakes before mentioning this. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala's richness and generosity and how much he gave to Sulaiman, alayhi salam, 
was not just because of how awesome he was, but because how generous Allah is, and how giving Allah is, and how rich Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. That's the highlight. And so the reason I bring this up is because maybe you're too shy to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something great. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, I want to make dua for this, but I'm not good enough to do so. Well, it's not about how good you are, it's about how rich and generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So ask Allah ta'ala for forgiveness, recognize your mistakes, as he does as well. He says, qala rabbil firli, first thing he says is, oh Allah forgive me. So clearly he recognized the mistakes mentioned in the, in the, in the, in the earlier, you know, the previous ayat. So the first thing he says, my Lord, forgive me. And then he says, uh, 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 and And bless me or bestow upon me a kingdom that nobody else is going to have the likes thereof. So subhanAllah, the lesson is what? Aim big. Know that Allah Ta'ala is rich. Know that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala has infinite and abundant wealth and possibility. And so you can make dua and even as imperfect as you are, even with the amount of mistakes that you have, still don't be shy to say, Ya Allah, forgive me and bless me with the best. Jazamdallah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.